The boys will be particularly confident of shifting the wheels, tin work, and dashboard with cold start system. Whilst the biggest ticket item should be the engine and gearbox. But on day one, there's a catch. So we've got the tractor transported back and it's now not running. I think the start motor's packed up. There's no key like a normal car. You've got to push this safety switch, lift up the gear stick, pop it into start. That's how you start it, with the gear stick. Oh, come on, George. It's only a flipping tractor. I'm going to have to bump start it. A bump start on a tractor is pretty much the same as a car. And what's involved in a bump start is you've got to have the clutch disengaged but the vehicle in gear and then as you're towed up the road, you gradually release the clutch and the gear turns the engine over and fires it up. I'll say all that but I've never bump started a tractor. What's to do? Across the yard, reality has bitten hard, and Ben's enthusiasm for the transit-based ice cream van is on the wane. I've done a complete 180 on this. When we saw it first, you know, I was reminiscing about the great ice cream, Frankie, the, the side lolly, the 99, but now I'm not into it now. Honestly, Ben, that's a proper, proper ice cream machine. It's going to do over half our money. I fancy about 1,200 nickel for that. Frankie's on the money here. The ice cream maker could fetch a four-figure sum. Chiller unit and freezer should also make a healthy contribution to profits. Whilst the ever-popular transit engine and gearbox are other likely bankers. But before they can get their hands on any of the valuable machinery, they'll need access. Down at Elfie. Glass is coming away there. Oh, pull it down here. Now, a very simple job like taking those big windows out should be easy. But because that vehicle's so old and so rotten, the screws are just turning in the rotten wood behind them. Ben, I can't get this out. Ah, watch this. Multiple screwdriver technique, Frankie. One in there and a flat one behind it just to prise it out. I don't care what they say about you. I think you're all right. Thanks very much. Now, in theory, it was perfect. It used to be a Ford Transit and it got converted to an ice cream van, so we got a dual-purpose vehicle. But the harsh reality is it's, it's disgusting. It's agricultural. It's been bodged over the years. So, if this is a taste of things to come, we could be in real trouble. Across the yard, George and Sheldon are beginning to realise that their unusual vehicle choice is going to require a bit of thinking outside the box when it comes to dismantling. So we've got the tractor in the workshop and we've already taken the hood off and the fuel tank and a bit of an unconventional use for some straps. But it's with a good cause because this actually splits into three sections. You've got the engine and the front axle and that rolls forward. You leave the gearbox where it is, that sort of just stays there. Back axle, unbolts down the middle and rolls back. So what that gives us, by splitting it down, is three manageable lumps to work on. I bet some of this is the first time it's coming apart. Yeah. It's just so clever. You know, I think you probably only need, like, four different spanners to get this apart. When Harry Ferguson probably designed this, he designed it for farmers to work on it. It's got real mixed emotions over this little tractor. The fellow that I bought her from made it very clear to me that she's reached the end of her working life. So essentially, she's a scrapper. Sorry, girl. But I feel that I owe it to her that every part that I take off of her goes towards the restoration project of the highest quality. I've got the exhaust shell. Ugh. Harry Ferguson, I salute him. Ready? Yeah. Go. That is one fantastic little bit of kit. Come on, cup of tea. Meanwhile, Ben is hatching a plan to liberate the valuable equipment from the ice cream van. Whilst Frankie tries a spot of cold calling. I've seen you on the old, um, on the old internet, yeah. The ice cream game. That's right, isn't it? As it happens, I've got one. And the ice cream maker. You know, like the machine. 
As ever, the well-padded salesman is keen to please. Uh, might be ready. Even if that involves bending the truth. Is it ready? My answer to that is always yes. Come down. That's it. He's dropped me in it again. Now, I've had a look and I was quite surprised. I thought it'd be an electric generator, but it actually takes a power off the crankshaft off a couple of belts and runs down a big prop shaft down here. There's about six feet of it all the way to the ice cream machine. Now, I'm going to have to find where that ends and disconnect it. So what I'm going to have to do is cut a big inspection panel out here so it's bye-bye bodywork. Now I've cut that inspection panel out the side of the ice cream van, I can see where that prop shaft's connected to the ice cream machine. Unfortunately, I can't get to it from that inspection panel. So what I'm going to have to do is take out that sink next to the driver's seat. Can't smash it out because it's probably a saleable item. Not a lot of cash, but we spent a lot, so every little counts. And even once I have disconnected that prop shaft, that's not the end of the story. There's still bolts that bolt the whole frame to the floor of the ice cream van. I can't see all of them. So, a little bit of a puzzle still. But it's got to be done. As a child, Ben may have dreamed of being left alone in an ice cream van. But reality never quite lives up to fantasy. For George and Sheldon, dismantling the Ferguson TE20 is an altogether simpler process. That's it. But that's not to say it's without its complications. Normally, the wheels are the quickest and easiest job you'll have on a car. This is a bit different. The wheels are huge. I mean, they're bigger than a lorry. What I've had to do to get those rear wheels off is lift it up, get the wheel off, lower it down onto an axle stand, move the engine hoist over to the other side, and it's the same procedure again. And the thing that I really noticed at the end was those wheels, they are heavy. At least the front wheels should be a bit easier. Just as well as a potential buyer, Hardy has arrived on site. My name's Hardy, I'm after a couple of wheels for my Fergie T20. Uh, I've got three tractors already, two are in the middle of being refurbished and we're after a new set of wheels. I don't really want to pay much more than £30 for them, it depends on what sort of condition they're in. That one's nice, isn't it? I was hoping for 80 quid, mate. You can wheel them back for 80 quid. I've got a lot of work to do on this one. This one's nice and clean. This one... What, a little time. bit of a wire brush on a, on a, on a, on a drill? If the tyres were good, maybe, yeah. I'd go 50. 60 quid, we've got a deal. No, 50. 50 or a walk. Meet you halfway, 55. Come on. Don't let me walk them back in there for a fiver. Nah, 50. 50 notes, that's it. Done. All right, mate. Well, I'll see you later. Seriously? Yeah. You're going you to lose them for a five pound? Yeah. Oh, 50 quid. God. 50 quid. You're lucky I've only got three days, do you know that? Because if I didn't, I'd lose it for a fiver as well. But 50 I'm... quid. 50 quid isn't bad for a first sale, but there's still a long way to go if Sheldon wants to turn a profit on his tractor. Before Ben and Frankie can start earning big bucks, they need to remove the chiller unit that's barring access to the valuable ice cream maker. Ben had a bit of a struggle trying to get this out. But as it happens, I looked inside and, uh, Bob's your uncle. Two ice cream cones. I mean, you might laugh, but I fancy I can place these. And to prove his point, Frankie takes a trip down memory lane. Well, a lane, anyhow. This is uh, Brick Lane in the East End. Say no more. A bit of an area I used to knock about in quite a lot of years ago. All round this area here now, you could buy anything. You could buy almost any animal you wanted to in the dog market. You know, it was all colourful stuff, you know, all good stuff. It's a very trendy part of the land, land that they live in now. It's not my cup of tea anymore, but, you know, I can understand it. Well, perhaps Frankie will be able to get a cup of traditional Rosie Lee at a cafe that's been an East End institution for decades. I'm Nevio Polici, 
and me and my family run Polici's Cafe. We've been here for over 100 years. My parents were in here. I was born just around the corner. My sister works with us, my cousin, my mum's in the kitchen. It's a good traditional family business. I've known Frankie for years. He said he had a nice deal for me. He said he had some ice cream cones that he'd got off of an ice cream van. Frankie's told me they're not in perfect condition, so I'm open to pay about 50 quid for them. And I think it'd be something that might look really good on the cafe, so if the price is right, I'm sure we'll do a bit of business together. Nev? Yes, Frank? Well, I brought these down here for you. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I fancy that they're right up your street. Yeah. I know you mentioned something about lights, like a couple of lights going yeah. in them or something no, like that. they look nice, yeah. If I clean them up a little bit, they need a bit of work doing on them. I'm looking at sort of 180 subs for these, Nev. How do you feel about that? It's a bit too much for me, Frank. Why'd you say that? Oh, Frank, no. look, this one's falling apart. No, but... No, I've got to get it all worked out. No, because you excess, you know what I mean? For lights and electricals and the... Uh... Come on, do me a better price, Frank, than that. If I said to you sort of uh, 140, how'd you feel about that, Nev? That's better than 180. It's better than 180. But it's still a bit far away We're from me. a little bit far away. 80 quid? 80 quid is a little bit too strong. Um, because I'm going to do the right thing for you yeah. and let you have these for a long, 100 quid to yeah. you, right? Because I love you. I know you do. And, um, plus a bit of grub, a bit of spaghetti, a bit of spaghetti, a bit, uh, bit of salt. How's that? Good boy, Nick. And uh, what about the dough? Can you part up or what? Yeah, of course I can, mate. Lovely. Here you yeah. go. No, I like it. Like it. Love it, Nick. Thank you, Frank. Two fiberglass ice cream cones sold for a one -er. And a plate of pasta, just like a mama used to make. Lovely. Wonderful. I've never had a deal, actually, that's been as wonderful as the deal I've just done. Am I happy with 100 Nicker? Oh, shit, Coco. I'm, I'm over the moon. I'm double excited that I've walked out of there and I've nicked 100 quid off of someone for a couple of ice cream cones. One of them's broke. It's day two out of three, as the teams attempt to stash the cash by breaking their working vehicles. Ben and Frankie splashed 1,800 quid on a transit-based ice cream van. Day one, they managed to shift a pair of decorative fiberglass cones for 100 pounds. George and Sheldon coughed up 8,500 quid for a Ferguson TE20 tractor. They made a good start by flogging the front wheels for 50 notes. But as day two dawns, Sheldon is beginning to realise that a lack of knowledge and contacts could seriously hamper his business plans. No, 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 no. That, that's never, ever going to happen. If you want it, make me a, a sensible offer. Please don't insult me. I'm a businessman. I'd rather put her back together again and keep her for myself personally. Oh. <sighs> To be fair, I think I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. Stanmore doesn't really have a large farming community, so I think I'm going to have to make a few trips out because um, the farming community ain't coming to me, so um, I think I'm going to have to go and look for it. Now, I've been on the net and there's um, a show on called Tractor World. Hello. I just wanted to inquire into um, getting a pitch, if possible. I've got um, a Ferguson TE20. Um, so those are very, very good sellers, are they? It looks pretty promising, so hopefully I'm going to have a result. Cheers. Securing the pitch is only half the battle, of course. There's no point in going to market without merchandise, so it's time to strip. That's for sure. It is a risky strategy, because once I go there, I've got all my eggs in one basket. Across the yard, the labour-intensive task of liberating the ice cream-making machine is reaching its conclusion. Right, sir. One more. You got it, brother. But the stubborn transit won't give up the bounty without a fight. Hang on, get back. Tilt it. There's little time to waste as potential punter Dan has arrived on site. Well, Frank has been in touch with me and he's indicated that he might have a Carpajani van machine for Will sale. It? Of course, an heavy lamp, isn't it? Oh. We buy and sell ice cream equipment, take in old machines as trade-ins. Take it away, maestro. We repair them, give them a new life and then sell them on again. Well done, babe. And if it's in good condition, 
I could be prepared to pay up to a thousand pounds. All right, Frank. Dan, isn't it? It is, yeah. Hello, Dan.